It is a painting. God damn it. See, it's not... I mean, it's obvious that everyone who comes to that point is going to go, of course I'm going to try and save Himeno. Duh. Aha, uh -huh, bad end. <laughs> Got you, sucker. <laughs> Every single fucking choice is designed like that. Head for the deep sea fish truth. I reach for the small handle under the director's desk. Wait just a little longer, Himeno. I have no time, but that means I have to be all the more careful. In a way, this is Montan Aquarium's final puzzle. The closed down deep sea fish booth. Everything will be settled there. There has to be an end into the red Montan Aquarium. Embracing the vigor in my chest, I pull open the small door. I was just concerned the whole place was going to disappear while we're still stuck in it. And Himeno is still stuck in it. I descend the ladder leading from the director's office, walking along the dark underground passageway for several meters and reach another ladder. Causing a dull sound to echo, I climb the ladder. As I approach the door overhead, cold air flows through. <sighs> Pushing the door up with my head, I've reached the top of the ladder. Wow, those are pretty. Man, the CGs in this game are actually pretty fucking amazing. Not gonna lie, they're pretty stunning. This is the deep sea fish booth. This might have the most stunning CGs I've seen in a visual novel. They're pretty standout, man. I mutter, closing the door I come up through. Inside it's pitch black, as if to match the real deep sea, it is a world with no light. My unease in the dark comes from deep down in my heart, however at this moment I'm unable to suppress that feeling, stretching my arms out to the left and right I carefully walk on. There must be something here, I'm absolutely sure of it. Huh, that light. After walking for a bit I find a light floating in my path. It's neither the red light nor the blue one I saw in the director's office, but rather a golden light. Like that of the morning sun. I suddenly begin walking toward the light. There may be nothing there, but I don't even consider that possibility. Pretty. Called by the light, I move forward. But I know. Having gotten close enough to touch the light, my movements seem to be off. The ball of light before my eyes has begun dodging me. A deep sea fish, huh? That much I can understand. A football fish. Perhaps the most famous of deep sea fish. It emits light, even in the depths of the deep sea, slying away its, slyly awaiting its prey. Isn't that an anglerfish? But I'm no longer prey. Passing the light, it's as if something has been blown open, as things flicker around the, throughout the room. Yellow lights, blue lights, even red lights, they all rush about the room like fibers. All of the lights waver like the surface of the water. Thanks to the intermittent light, I begin to grasp the full form of the deep sea fish booth. Fish are swimming all throughout the room, the light itself is the fish's habitat. This is the sea to the fish spirits that have lost the malice that once guided them. I'm not afraid anymore. The director himself said that they had all been freed from their malice. Just as he said, the fish no longer have any aggression. The oarfish, the monkfish, the hagfish. There are also ones with scary faces, transparent fish, and fish that glow beautifully, though differently from football fish. These, this room, filled with several deep sea fish, it's more realistic and more magnificent than any other display space. I'm no longer afraid, so come on out. Moving through all the fish, I touch a wall on the inside of the deep sea fish booth. Marty. Just as I call her name, I feel my legs slam close together. No dying now. Huh? I suppose this is what you call carelessness. My legs have been grabbed by a large tentacle. It has white skin and, a, and pale pink suckers. At my feet is the deep sea. I can see a black shadow, far closer to me than the bottom of the sea. I've seen this creature on the news, on TV. It's the largest creature on planet Earth. A giant squid. Wait, no. A giant squid's not as big as like a blue whale, right? A blue whale's fuck tons bigger than a giant squid, right? Right? Blue whale's definitely the largest creature on Earth. Right? <laughs> Someone tell me! Am I living a lie? My impatience is greater than my fear. But before it can pull me in, I have to escape. But the suction pads are strong. Unless it's a kraken. Those aren't real. <laughs> As I struggle, another tentacle approaches. I don't think. <laughs> Dummy. Huh? That's the voice of hope. A small hand reaches down from above as I'm pulled further into the deep sea. A hand of salvation for me as I writhe against imminent death in the darkness. Oh, of course I'm going to take the hand, but it's going to like rip my fucking head off or something. Big sister, if you go away before we make up, I really will hate you. I'm not going anywhere. First, I grasp her hand tightly with my right hand. 
At such a miracle, I begin to feel my zeal retaining. Next, I grab the little hand with my left hand. I can feel my energy growing stronger. I'm pulled up with a great amount of power. It isn't just the owner of the voice's strength either. I can feel the intervention of a miraculous amount of power. With just that, the tentacles that hold my legs and have refused to let go are easily peeled away. Ow. Pulled from the darkness, I land on my backside. I don't know how many times today I've fallen down. Please cut it out. The bones of my butt feel like they'll break. There's been a lot of uh, talking about her butt going on this this game. Not gonna lie. It's kind of weird. <laughs> this is no time for such carefree thoughts. I've ended up in the deep sea fish booth once more. This room with so many types of fish just swimming about. She's here. I puff out my cheeks, place my hands on my hips, and push myself forward with my palms. Marty, really, I... Huh? Who are you? I thought you were my big sister, but you're growing up. Looking at me as I lift my head is a girl with long hair. Marty is looking down at me. It's me. Nakanobi Mayumi. Your big sister. Yep, I'm not wrong after all. You're a grown-up. But you're my big sister. I wouldn't be surprised for her not to recognize me. In the five years that have passed, I've been going through a growth spurt. I've grown quite noticeably. I cut my hair that was, at the time, as long as Marty's. And my looks and my body have become a little more mature. But Marty is laughing and nodding. She's called me Big Sister. I've been looking for you this whole time, Big Sister, since you got lost. I thought I should find you, Big Sister, the whole time. I realize that Marty's voice has an echo to it. It isn't because of the rumor, and it's probably due to the lack of sh light shining through Marty's silhouette. I saw something scary. A lady with a scary face wouldn't let man who looked worried get out of the water. She was drowning him. A lady? A man? Could that be the director and Sagi Numa? Reiko? I got so scared and I ran away, but the lady chased after me. Sagi Numa Reiko. Marty, she... I ran and ran. I hid myself in some sort of box. I thought of how I wanted to see you and stayed there the whole time. Then suddenly the whole place filled with water and... I... I went to sleep. Marty, I'm sorry I couldn't save you. Having witnessed the scene of a murder, Marty ran away within Mountain Aquarium as Sagi Numa Reiko pursued her. Then she ended up in some empty tank that was then filled with water and then she... Was it an accident? Sagi Numa Reiko's doing? Or could it have possibly been she slipped into the Red Mountain Aquarium? In this world a strange phenomenon, Marty herself probably doesn't even know. The one truth is that Marty's life was brought to an end. After that, why'd you come back here? I don't know, I drifted. Sleeping the whole time. Then I thought that you'd come. So I woke myself up. Marty, you're dead, aren't you? I say these words, enduring the pain in my heart. It feels like I have no choice but to say them. Yes, sorry, big sister. The one who should apologize is me. I had no idea you faced something so terrible. I wasn't even able to save you. Even though you waited here for me, I couldn't save you. That's right, jeez, because you always get lost. Big sister, are you crying? Marty says this to me in an innocent voice. I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm her big sister, her big sister. Five years her senior, so then I can't cry. Marty is smiling so broadly. I can't let her see me do something so uncool as crying. Yeah, <laughs> someone look uncool. Finally, I was able to see Marty. Finally, I was able to reunite with Marty. No matter what form she takes, this isn't supposed to be a sad thing, is it? Well, I'm going now. To where? I don't know. But this cradle where I've been sleeping feels as if it's slowly disappearing. That's why I feel somehow that I'm not supposed to be here anymore. Marty, thank you for saving me. I was unable to save Marty, but even so, Marty brought me through my own crisis. I'm pretty pathetic for a big sister, huh? No, after all, you came to see me, didn't you? Yeah. Mountain Aquarium's final truth. For me, that would be Marty's death. I realized this a long time ago, honestly, but I was unable to accept it and let it go so easily. Little by little, the light enveloped, enveloping Marty grows stronger. If the director was like a shell for the Red Mountain Aquarium, then Marty, surely being one drop amongst the collective, was being released. The thing that held her here now is gone. All around me, numerous other lights are climbing toward heaven, as if the ceiling is no obstacle. Pillars of light filled the deep sea fish booth. This other Mountain Aquarium is vanishing. Big sister, I love you. How about you? It's the same for me as it should be. Well, I'm going then. Wait, Marty. What is it, big sister? This keychain. It's my treasure, so... I pull the keychain, bearing all my memories from my pocket. 
I dropped it once, but it came back as if guided by destiny, a true treasure. Just as if she was seeing it for the first time, Marty makes a sad face. No fair. After all, back then you told me how important it was. It is important and precious, so I'll give it to you, Marty. I'm your big sister, Marty. It was such a trivial thing that I regret from that day. I won't make that same mistake again. I mean, you're not going to get the chance, but... What it is that's important to me, I feel like I understand that a little better now than I did back then. Thank you, but sorry. I gave... I gave my keychain to a girl that looks just like me, so I can't trade with you. The faint band of light appears in Marty's eyes, illuminated by the numerous twinkling lights. Marty is so pretty. It's alright. In sync with my words, I rub Marty's head. I cannot touch her long hair, but even so, I embrace her. I know that girl. She's a friend of mine. Well then, I'll treasure it, no matter what. Okay. The light envelops even me. The warmth is like Marty's own body temperature. In this way, Marty will probably go to heaven. I believe that Marty will definitely go on to a happier world, because Marty is a kind girl. Do not toy with me. Huh? Kya! As if an arrow had been shot through the room, all of the twinkling lights stop and sync with the voice. As soon as I hear the voice, the light surrounding Marty disappears. And it's as if time has stopped, leaving me wide-eyed at the small voice that screams hard enough to burn itself out. Himeno? No, this shouldn't be. I'm denying the truth in front of me. The owner of that voice... Don't go deciding it's all over on your own. Sakuragi, going and destroying this place because you say your objective is complete. How convenient. I'll kill that brat. I'll kill anyone who saw what I did. Then I'll return to Montana Aquarium. The wall of the deep sea fish booth is thrown open and inside I can faintly see the tunnel tank. Even though I was standing there, lit from behind by the red light leaking out from the entrance, her face is covered in a distinct shadow. This isn't the appearance of the weakened Himeno, nor is it the Himeno I know. No, it sounds like Sagi Numa. Her breathing, rough, and her expression furious, she takes a sta stance like a model would. No, why? Marty's gentle expression has changed to one of fear in an instant. Everything is bathed in red light and my pulse quickens and grows stronger. My- As she says this, the corners of Himeno's mouth bend. Even though I recognize that expression as a smile, and it takes me some time. Found you. You're... you're that... no. Letting out a sudden scream, Marty takes off running. In order to reach the one and only exit in the basement, Marty uses her small body to slide past Himeno's thigh. Himeno, why? Hey! Answer me, Himeno! Why, my name isn't Himeno. Huh? What do I do? Isn't that... could she be... There's no mistake in that, as Himeno's face and voice. However, this isn't the first time I've heard the way Himeno's speaking right now. I remember it. It's someone I know. Sagi Numareko. You have guts to address a lady older than you without respect. So you're a spirit after all. How'd you get Himeno's body? Through possession? Himeno. This vessel? This girl was shaken, and at the bottom of her heart she bore resentment. Resentment? Yes, as to the one who left her all alone, that would be you. Nakanobe Mayumi-san. Himeno resented? Himeno gives a sly grin. No, the one in front of me isn't Himeno. It isn't. B but but I came all the way here for Himeno. I followed that brat to kill her, but I slipped from the, mach the machine and died, so I was unable to finish the job. If I can't get rid of my worries, I cannot rest easy. Sleep deprivation is the enemy of a woman's complexion. What? But you're already dead, aren't you? If she weren't dead, how could she couldn't possess Himeno like this? It doesn't matter, I'll use this girl's soul. This time, create my version of Montana Aquarium. There, I'll resume my peaceful existence. If you're dragging Himeno into it, then it's all wrong, isn't it? My soul is nothing more than a droplet within Montana Aquarium. Just as I'm released, I'm pulled back in. My soul alone can't create Montana Aquarium. I need something not linked to this place or the other souls. So I'll use this girl's soul. Then isn't that enough? Marty is already... It doesn't matter, I'll kill that child. If I don't, I cannot move forward. There's nothing more for you to move forward to. With a twisted expression, Himeno clicks her tongue with a t No, that's not Himeno. Himeno would never make that face. I'll go ahead and say this, but it's because this vessel has its own will that I'm like this. The reason I hate you is because of a vector of malice from within. That's a lie. Mayu, I hate you. What? Words said on the spur of the moment. Words that don't even fill up a second. Those words definitely originated from Himeno's mouth. 
and Himeno's voice in the same way of speaking Himeno uses. Saginu Mareko spins her body around and with the sound of her heels going clack 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 leaves the deep sea fish booth behind. She begins walking into the Mantine Aquarium that is now corroded with red. Stupid Himeno, you idiot. Feeling nauseated I say this over and over. That's why I'll, sa I'll save you, no matter what. I don't care if Himeno hates me, because I love her. All through the red aquarium the fish swim about, rushing out of the tanks that served as containers. They literally migrate into every inch of the area, and has become a big ocean far greater than just the deep sea fish boot. The cutlass fish that was hopping around the tunnel, tunnel tank is now just a school of swimming, fish swimming about. Occasionally a ma manta ray passes at my feet, and a small shark swims overhead. The fish's understanding of the space is probably different from mine. The walls, floors and ceiling are definitely there, but any concept of up or down, left or right is irrelevant to them. The two perceptions of the world are merging together. Neither version of the world seems to be changing into the malicious aquarium that existed up until now. All of it blends together, a world on the threshold. If what Saginu Mareko said is true, at that moment, at the moment Marty and I touched hands, the new Red Mountain Aquarium was completed. I won't let you. This is something I definitely will not allow. I can guess where she's headed. I doubled my speed and head for that place as well. She said she fell from a machine. If there's a machine high enough to die from falling off of, there's no place it could be except for the machine room. There was a ladder leading to it from the passageway where Kiyoshi san went crazy. So that's the way I head. Weaving through the fish, I move along. I'm going to save the people who are important to me. Let's go. There's a door combined with a panel on a wall just after exiting the tunnel tank. Upon closer inspection, the words staff only are written on it. I open it and see that there are staff passageways that go to the stage. There are many hidden passageways beside this one in the aquarium. Before I realise it, I've become so knowledgeable about this place. I have no time to get caught up in sentimentality. Stopping Sagi Numereko takes priority. On opening the door, cool air flows out. Just to be safe, I look all around, but there's no sign of yoshi san The time axis may be changing every time someone passes through a door, but I don't sense any strange phenomena in the dead silence of the passageway, so all that's left to do is to move on. Himeno! Though I call out in a loud voice, I get no response. Himeno, Marty, where are you? As I move further into the passageway, I call out several times, however, there is no response. If so, then Sagi no Mareko has probably already climbed up. I climb the ladder on the side of the passageway, as this passageway is essentially a sub-basement. The very top is quite high up. I climb it in one go. Looking out, I'm on a walkway above the tunnel tank. From here, one could feed the fish in the tank or adjust, or adjust the machines. Being above the tunnel tank puts me about three stories high. Looking up from below, it's hard to tell how high this goes, thanks to the water. Physically, I get the sense that that's how high I've climbed. It's so deep I can't see the bottom. Even if I fell into the water from here, it would still be dangerous. With my clothes, I'd easily sink to the bottom. If there was no water, just thinking about it is terrifying. Right now, I can't be certain that there's water filling it, filing it, filling it to the brim. The thin walkway above the giant tank is a bridge about 10 meters across. Even missing one's footing by one step could easily lead to them falling. There seems to be a ladder on the other side as well. The metallic footsteps coming from over there hint at the fact. Over there are Himeno and Marty. I've heard these footsteps before. They're Himeno's boots. My, you know this place well. From her head down, Himeno's body appears clearly. Directly across from me on the walkway where I currently stand, Himeno, Sagi Numareko, is standing there. She's holding the captured Marty. Marty? Don't move, you know what'll happen if you do, right? Big sister, I got caught. <sighs> Sagi Numareko has Marty by the collar, tightly restraining her, and goes without saying that there is a major difference in stature between Marty and Himeno. She holds her as if as if she intends to enact violence on her captive. Marty puts a smile on her painted face. The fact that she's forcing her smile is clear as day. The order in which one does things is important. After I kill this brat, I'll cast aside the flesh of this vessel and assimilate myself into the aquarium. Once my Montan aquarium is complete, I'll curse you and end your life. So keep quiet and observe. Stop calling Marty a brat already and stop calling Himeno a vessel. Is there any meaning whatsoever in all of that? For me, the role one plays takes precedence, and in my world, I'm at the centre. How awful. I can't think of you as human. Marty alone is bad enough, but Himeno is being held hostage here as well. If Himeno drowns, I can't save her. How can I possibly save both of them? I frantically search my thoughts. Well, Marty can't die, she's already dead. Saginu Mareko isn't taking her eyes off me. 
At the same moment, I become aware of her stare. She laughs boldly. Mayu, you're the one who's awful. What? With that brief phrase, she halted my thoughts. Just like the bizarre phenomenon at the deep sea fish booth, her voice and tone are unmistakably humanized. Leaving me in that terrifying place, it's your fault that I've ended up like this, Mayu. If you just told me the truth about yourself, we wouldn't have gotten into a fight. If you just told me about things like your sister going missing, or that she was here instead of deciding everything on your own, I wouldn't have ended up like this. Himen, I said. That's how you, th how you saw it. Even though Saginu Mareko was possessing her, those words just now were none other than Himeno's. I see Himeno as my best friend because of that. I know that those words are how she truly feels. You know I thought of you as my best friend, Mayu. But that was just my own misconception. You didn't care what happened to me, did you, Mayu? That's not... My words of denial come out shrouded, shrouded un in uncertainty. Himeno's expression is a serious one. It's the face I saw when we fought. Like in a... Looking a little like she might cry, but very angry. I came all this way for Himeno. Why are things getting so messed up here at the very end? Himeno, I'm sorry. Don't give up again, big sister. As I start to look down, Marty's voice calls back to me. Marty? When I've been in an argument, I've lied too. Even though I love you, I said I hated you. This lady is making the same face I made at those times. Didn't I tell you not to speak? Sagini Mareko squeezes the base of Marty's neck even tighter. Marty instantly shuts her eyes and then looks at me through, the, through thin slits. Marty? I'm alright, big sister. With a pained expression, Marty continues to smile. I... I love you, big sister. Just the way that you are. I told you to shut up, didn't I, you little brat? Bye-bye, big sister. Just as she hints up with her tone, Sagini Mareko tosses Marty into the tank water. Even at that last moment, Marty's face was smiling. Marty? It's almost a reflex. I dive into the tank. Ha <laughs> Serves you right. I hate such juvenile ways of thinking. Saigeno Mareko's shrill laughter resonates from overhead. I swim after Marty as she sinks to the bottom of the tank. Swimming isn't exactly my forte, but no matter what, I want to save her. Die, die, die! This way I'll finally be free. My soul will finally become one with this Mantan Aquarium. I swim deeper and deeper. I notice that Marty's body is beginning to float up little by little. The tanks here in the aquarium contain a great deal of salt, much like seawater. The force with which something is thrown in dis disappears against the water's resistance, causing it to float. I will save Marty. I reach out my hand and grab Mari Marty's. I don't know if I actually touch Marty's hand, but I definitely have the sensation I grabbed something. Just like that, the two of us float upward. At this speed, we should be able to keep breathing. <coughs> this time I was able to save you, Marty. I was able to save you. Thank you, big sister. I don't think I can consider it saving her, since she's already dead. This time, I was able to hold the hand of the, my one and only little sister, whom I was unable to save five years ago. The thoughts and feelings have lingered for five years. We we're finally able to get through. I'm unbelievably happy. My, what a pity. Huh? That transient joy is smashed away in the blink of an eye. Sagi Numareka is also leapt into the tank. Riding the force of her dive, she grabs hold of us and pulls us toward the bottom of the tank. Her strength is so great it's impossible to think of it as human. No matter how great human those reflexes are, there should be no way for her to drag two people underwater. This is a manifestation of Sagi Numareko's grudge. I thought I'd properly curse you to death, but I've changed my mind. You could die here with your best friend. I can hear Sagi Numareko so clearly, her voice seems to be echoing right through my mind. Despite the fact that we're underwater, it rattles my brain like the clanging of a bell. And becomes a piece of my grudge, giving shape to my Mantan Aquarium. <laughs> this old lady is so annoying. What did you say? Marty's faint voice mixes with Sagi Numareko's reverberating shrill laugh. Big sister, I'm so glad you saved me in the end. Marty is enveloped by a white light spreading out from her chest. The light gradually grows larger, quickly spreading through the entire tank. Take good care of your friend. What's she doing now? The light mixes with the water, becoming a faint blue light. Within it, numerous fish swim about. What is this light? This brat shouldn't be able to... 
All of them hate you, lady. What are you trying to do? I'm only trying to get my tranquility. No, stop. Even within the brilliant light, I can clearly see what's going on. Several fish are opening and closing their mouths, pulling on Himeno's body. No, they're pulling something out of Himeno's body. S stop, stop this! Himeno's body is becoming double layered. One is Himeno, the other is Sagino Mareko's body. Sagino Mareko's body. Her soul is little by little being torn away from Himeno's body by the fish. You will st stop this! We won't stop. This time, it's my turn to save my big sister. Oddly, even though I'm underwater, I don't feel as if I'm suffocating. There have been various strange phenomena within Man Mountain Aquarium. I've seen many odd things. Over the side of the fish's counterattack unfolding before my eyes is by far the most fierce. They are filled with the energy of lives just freed from so much hatred and resentment. I'll curse you even if I die, I'll curse you. Impossible. The fish here are going to eat every last bit of your soul. What on earth is Marty? I don't get it, but this is what I decided to do, so I've done it. Could it be that you become one with the aquarium before I could? Don't toy with me. Stop this! Saginu Mareko's body has already become completely detached from Himeno's. With a look of anguish on her face, her body is being picked at by the fish. The contours of her flesh are gradually becoming distorted as Saginu Mareko sinks away. In contrast, I am floating toward the top of the tank. It isn't because I am swimming, nor because of buoyancy. Orca, sea lions, and various other sea animals are pushing Himeno and I up. You little... This is all that I can do. From within the light, I hear Marty's voice. Marty's body is no longer next to us. So hang in there just a bit lo little longer, big sis. The past. It's what created the current me. All of the things accumulated from the past. That's what I used to think made me who I am. But Marty's radiance taught me something. I, we, are all surrounded by the possibilities of the future. The past isn't everything I am. It's something that remains in my heart to push me further along. Big sister. See you later. Yes, definitely. We'll meet again, Marty. This is my farewell. As the light fades, my breathing begins to steady. As for how much time has passed, it hasn't been more than a matter of minutes. I'd lost consciousness. This is... I've returned to the walkway on top of the tunnel tank. Next to me, Himeno is sleeping. Hey, Himeno. Even as I call out to Himeno, there's no response. Huh, wait, could she? I begin to feel apprehensive. It isn't impossible. We were in the water for a very long time. The amount of endurance it took was well beyond the norm. On top of that, she was possessed by a spirit. I can't even imagine how much stamina that would drain away. It can't be. It can't be. Try not to think the worst. I rest my ear on Himeno's chest, pressing the soft feeling of her chest. Into the soft feeling of her chest, I concentrate very hard. But dum but dum I hear the sound of her heartbeat, thumping in a slow but steady rhythm. I'm so glad. She's probably just sleeping now, but Himeno is alive. The colony of parasites that were growing within Himeno back at the stage seem to have completely gone now. Their attack on Himeno must also have been a part of the grudge of Martin Aquarium. I was able to save you. I really was able to save you. A great joy gradually fills my chest. Upon hearing Himeno's pulse, my body goes limp. Ta-da! I was actually awake. Ta Sitting up with great vigour, Himeno spreads both arms wide. Surprised, I lose my balance and start to fall from the walkway. Ah, watch out! Himeno embraces me, pulling me close to her. Realising I won't, won't fall, I embrace her back. Jeez, I was so worried, Himeno. <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed, but thanks. Himeno breaks away from me and suddenly stands up. I'm so glad it's not Saginu Mareko, but the cheerful is always Himeno. Finally, feeling a real sense of relief, my tears gradually begin to flow. Hey, why are you crying, mate? Because you... The thread of tension that was pulled so tight begins to loosen at once. Too much has happened in this month in the aquarium. Still, somehow, I was able to overcome it all. I was saved by so many people. All of it was for this very moment. Well, where are we? Uh, huh? In other words, Himeno still has no idea what happened here. The one who was talking to me was Sagi Numareko to the end. It wasn't Himeno. Well, uh, where should I start? How about from the beginning? Just as Himeno tilts her head and looks at me once more, the walkway suddenly begins to shake. An earthquake? No, the, the Montana Aquarium is disappearing. Leaving us no time to be surprised, the shaking grows more intense. Unlike the poltergeist phenomena in the director's office, the entire room is shaking. This doesn't seem to be a natural phenomenon. I grab Himeno's hand and motion for her to climb down the ladder. Now it's surely begun to crumble. Crumble? I forcefully bring Himeno, who looks like she wants to tell me she doesn't understand this at all, along with me. 
The ending has begun for everything that this Red Mountain Aquarium held. Despite the fact that we may not understand everything about the grudge or the souls, this space is about to be destroyed. We should head for the exit. At this point I can't think of anything else. The law of Mountain Aquarium is that every time one passes through a door, the time axis changes. The biggest boundary here would definitely be the entrance and exit gate. I don't really get it, but I guess at any rate we have to hurry, right? Yeah, let's go. Mate, you're pretty reliable. What are you saying? Jeez, let's hurry. Quickly climbing down the ladder, we rush through the staff passageway. Meanwhile, the ground continues to tremble, causing us to stumble as we move on. As we move out of the staff passageway, we're taken, but taken aback. The booths in Mountain Aquarium themselves look like they've been completely eaten up by bugs and worms. The tunnel tank is cracked throughout, and numerous holes are opening up in the floor. Uh, what's going on? I think it'd be pretty bad if you fell into one of the holes. Be careful. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Given the circumstances, our steps speed up. Before I know it, we've reached the Tokyo Bay fish booth, the booth closest to the exit. Passing through the place we came to first, the gate is right before our eyes. We can see the elevator and reception area on the other side of the gate, however, there's nothing else there. A strange mist hangs in the spaces between the numerous automatic turnstiles. From all throughout the mist comes a bright light. It's alright, I'm sure this is it. My instinct tells me so. When I realise I'm standing in front of the gate with Himeno, I'm deeply moved. I hear the sound of teardrops falling. Finally, we've made it here. Himeno probably just tilts her head at my brooding words. It's been such a long journey. Okay, let's go home. Himeno? I take Himeno's hand and ask quietly, but she suddenly looks down. You know, Mayu. Her voice is quiet. As Himeno says my name, her voice has taken on a serious air. One different from when we fought, or from our fun chats at lunchtime. What's wrong, Himeno? I actually do have memories of when Saginu Mareko took over my body. Could they be from that time? Obviously. That time, that time Himeno told me what was in her heart. Himeno told me straight out her true feelings, her dissatisfaction, without hiding anything. Yeah, Mayu, you probably thought that was a trick by Saginuma-san to confuse you, but those were my true feelings. Without any lie, those were the feelings inside of me, so they came out of my own mouth. I see. Yeah, your true feelings. That's right, I... At one time, I hated you. Even though I don't feel that way at all now. I love you. I did feel that way. That I detested you. Since you risked your life to save you, Mayu. Save me, Mayu. I can't seriously lie to you. I can't keep hiding that from you. Himeno? That's why I can't go with you. Mayu, I'm sorry, but I... Still looking down, Himeno lets go of my hand. As the rumbling of the ground continues, the wearing away of Mountain Aquarium steadily grows worse. Clearly, it's a sign that before long, this Mountain Aquarium will disappear. Just once, I ask a question within myself. I have no doubts. I hear the sound of Himeno weeping. It's rare for her to cry. Uh, but when we see touching movies, she always cries. I wonder why Himeno is crying with such a brooding face. I don't understand the reason. Himeno, you're such a fool. Huh? We're best friends. The parts that I like, the parts that I don't, friends accept all of it. I tightly grab the hand that she's pulled away. May? Himeno lifts her head, tears accumulating in her eyes, and rushes over to me. The two of us together pass through the gate. It's a foolish thing to hate her for because she wasn't 100% honest with you. But they argue and get pissy at each other over fucking nothing, so I'm not surprised really. Huh, this is staggering we come out of the gate. Everywhere we look, people, people, people. Customers and employees, there are innumerable amounts of people. Fish are only swimming within the tanks, the colour of the water isn't red, and I can't sense any abnormality anywhere. May, this is it, isn't it? Yes, we've come back. We were able to get back. As my eyes settle on the information desk at the entrance, a sudden wave of relief washes over me. Too much has happened since we came here, Himeno. Himeno and I may have some made minor injuries, but we've returned to the real world, more or less unscathed. I can't take anymore. I'm so happy. Himeno, we're back! Exhausted, I can no longer hold back everything welling up inside me. My eyes suddenly feel hot and large droplets overflow from them. I'm so glad. Hey, Mayu, if, if you cry in a place like this... I know. The people around us have no way of knowing that we, what we've been through. I'm just a junior high school who suddenly started to, school girl who suddenly started crying. I'll definitely be seen as a strange girl. 
Uh, I want to find some place on the edge of the room. I'll go buy some cocoa. No, let's go together. I don't want to be apart. Okay, okay. You're such a baby, mayu -chan. You idiot. We sit in the rest area and Himeno pats my back. Just as I start to calm down, I glance at my watch. According to the time, it's about 8 o'clock at night. Our whole ordeal wasn't even a full 8 hours. Even so, it was the most dens densely packed period of time in my life. Say, Mayu. What's up, Himeno? I love you. Saying this in a conspicuously loud voice, Himeno winks at me. Hey, that's a bit sudden. Averting my eyes, I push Himeno away, but I can't keep a smile off my face. I don't know which of us is more embarrassed. I wanted to protect the smile, and I did. A bubbling warmth begins to boil over from within. I feel the same. Well then, let's go get some ice cream. Now? Why would we be late getting home? It's alright, I can help you with your excuse. In that case, I'll go shopping with you. Having pulled my hand away from Himeno, I board the elevator. The me up to this point would probably have just gone on home. Coming home late once in a while is probably okay. Right now I want to live in this very precious moment. Montana Aquarium. The place that takes up no more than one corner of Montana East Building. It's somewhere I can never forget. A sea of stars, a river of lights. Everyone is everyone. Just one of these, those lights, twinkling frantically, the light of life. It doesn't matter if it's fish or people, for both, it's an equally harsh world. Meetings and farewells. A resolution to overcome the farewell that pierces my heart. My heart drips endlessly. Just a powerless little drop. However, that sound is surely resonating somewhere. And... Yeah, we did it. We did it. I knew it. This is a long episode, so uh, I'm going to break it into two pieces. It'll be uh, part one and a part two of the ending, or whatever. I'm going to let the credits roll. Uh, if there is a post credit scene, I'll be back to uh, voice that. But if there is not, we are done. That was Sound of Drop. I liked it. Like I said, it has really nice CG scenes. The story was good. It was quite short, I think. I'm not exactly sure, but it was good. Good. Yeah. Like it a lot. <laughs> Now we gotta start another one. <laughs> I've still got Devotion on the computer I need to play. Anyway, I'll leave you to enjoy the critters. Hope you guys enjoyed it, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.
Whew, I brought them. I bought them. That necktie was so cute. And I found a strawberry scented candle and... You really did buy a lot. You won't get in trouble? That's fine, it's fine. Oh, that's right. We haven't looked at shoes today. Well, let's go. Hey, wait a second, Emino. I'm a little tired. How about we eat some ice cream and take a break? It's been one week since then. Emino and I are visiting Montana East Building again. My mother was a bit huffy about me going out for a second week in a row. But I got my way in the end. Even my nagging mother was surprised that I wouldn't back down. But I guess I've changed a little bit. It's alright. If we get ice cream. But don't mess up your stomach like you did last week, okay? I told you I'm fine already. After a week has passed, that terrifying aquarium is like a memory or a dream. And we've returned to a relatively unchanged daily life. That day, I eventually did eat three scoops of cookies and cream, and my stomach started to hurt. So I couldn't go shopping with Himeno after all. As compensation, we came here to get our fill of fun at the aquarium. That's right, Mountain Aquarium. There's a reason we came. Without hesitation, to this place stained with trauma. I don't want this to be a place filled with only bad memories. This is the place I last played with Marty. The place where I met Sayu. The place where we became friends. The place where it, it was etched into my heart. Just how important Himeno is to me. There are a lot of painful memories, but on the other hand, it's a place I really love. Well, to relax, should we head on into the aquarium? Mayu, aren't your legs still a bit too tired? It's fine. I'm totally fine. Alright then, let's go. Carrying her shopping bags with both hands, Himeno energetically heads for the elevator. Since we've been walking for a bit, the cool breeze from the air condition conditioning is a nice feeling. The window through which one can see all of Montaigne gets me excited. An upbeat song I wouldn't normally listen to is playing in the background. Montaigne East Building is totally fascinating. But the deep blue of Montaigne Aquarium is incredibly soothing. The beauty of the water and the light. The pulse of life in the future. What are you doing, Mayu? Let's go! Okay. I speed up to catch up to Himeno, who's gone on ahead. From here on, many beautiful things await me in the future. If I try my best, I can overcome all of the challenges awaiting me. That's why this is my farewell. Surely this is my sound of drops. 